coming to the CLP meeting today. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Dana Knight. I'll be your kind of CLP MC for the day for this English meeting and work in residence life over in Guidance Hall. Um, what we're going to be doing today during this interest meeting are two main things. One, we're going to explain what CLP is, in case you don't already know. And two, we're going to go through the different positions that are being offered through CLP. Uh, just kidding, there are three things. The third thing is going to be we're going to explain how the interview process is going to work. Okay? So, first and foremost, what is CLP? CLP stands for the Centralized Leadership Process. Okay, two main things from this. One, the centralized part. It's called centralized because most of the departments on campus who are hiring student leaders for the upcoming academic year, hire them through CLP. Okay, that means instead of you, if you are interested in up to 20 different leadership positions or you're at least just open to whatever, you don't have to set up 20 different interviews and fill out 20 different applications. You go through one centralized process, one set of interviews, and in that one process, you are seen by every single department on campus to either be offered exactly what you're looking for or be offered things you didn't know that you were looking for in the first place. Okay, so that's the centralized part. The second part of CLP is that we pair really closely with career services to try to model this as closely as possible to a professional job interview. Okay, so we're gonna see things like resumes, cover letters, group interviews, individual interviews, headshots, professional layer, et cetera. We're gonna get into that. But I just want to give a little plug. This is the third institution I've worked at. And the way CLP works has been, go ahead and come in and grab a seat. Uh, there's seats up here in the front. Don't be uh, shy, you know. Anyway, this is modeled really closely what I've personally experienced throughout becoming a professional. Okay, so just, just to know that part of this is professional development uh, for your own sake. There's career fair coming up in April. Um, that this is a great preparation for, for your future jobs. All right, so that's what CLP is. Big benefits of CLP, like I said, you're gonna get a chance to resume build and cover letter build. You'll get exposure to over 20 leadership positions on campus. You'll get feedback on all of those things, both written and verbal on how you've done, so you can improve for the future. And then finally, you get paid to do what you love. Every single position hiring through CLP is a paid position, whether that's through a scholarship or hourly pay or both. All right, beautiful. So the next part of this presentation, it's gonna be a lot of me talking kind of fast, uh, but I'm gonna go through all of the positions, <coughs> excuse me, that are being offered through CLP. So here's your job. It's not to take copious notes and memorize everything that I'm saying. All of the job descriptions for these things are on the CLP presence page, which we'll throw up a link for at the end if you haven't checked it out already. What your job is to do right now is to keep your ears and mind open to positions that you learn about right here to see, okay, maybe you came into this room being like, I know what I want, I want to be a JRA for residence life, and that's it. Okay, well, there's like 20 other things that might interest you that you didn't know about. And the good thing about CLP is you can end up being offered positions that you didn't apply for, because you may not think you're interested, but residence life might see you and be like, you would be a great RA, and just offer you a job you didn't ask for, right? That's awesome. So keep your ear open for things that you may be interested in, um, pay attention to things that could build your resume for the future. So there's different event planning jobs, there's community service jobs, there's internship positions for all sorts of different things, there's technology interns, right? Think of things that could help for your future as well. So we're going to jump in. The first bucket of leadership positions that are being offered through CLP fall under student mentorship. So the first one is a freshman symposium mentor. Who here went through freshman symposium? <coughs> Congratulations, that qualifies you to be a freshman symposium mentor. So if you are interested in working with a staff and faculty member to welcome freshmen into those first few months of campus to make their experience positive and to introduce them to UST, this could be a great thing for you. You also have a great networking opportunity to become close with a staff and faculty member that can help you a lot just getting connections for things moving forward. We have Mendenhall mentors. Did anyone here go through Mendenhall? Awesome, then you are qualified to be a Mendenhall mentor. You get to work with Amanda, who is probably one of the coolest people walking the planet Earth. And uh, you get to do a kind of similar thing for Freshman Symposium, but for that summer bridge program over the summer to be a part of their life and support them in their transition. Career Services is hiring a social media manager. There's a few departments hiring a similar position to this. Kind of the short and sweet of it is if you're good at social media and you're good at making other people look cool, we really need your help with that. So career services, uh, they're hiring someone to promote their stuff, to get their name out there. Um, so if you're already good at that, why not get paid to do it for someone else? 
Okay, Access and Disability Services are hiring two positions. The first one is the public relations interns, it's kind of similar to a social media intern, right? It's taking their mission, which is having a meaningful and inclusive experience for everyone on campus and making that broadcast so that people know about it, know about all the amazing services they offer. If you've never visited the Access and Disability Services on campus, I really encourage you to do so. It's like, go to the library. We've all been there. It's kind of like dark and dingy. But then you go down to the basement and you walk into ADS and it's like you've entered into the future. <laughs> and it's really bright and they have neon lights and there's an ice cream machine for free that you can have just for walking in to say hello. So they're very great. Um, they have a great purpose and a great mission. So if you're interested in that and helping that become a bigger part of campus life, this could be a good position for you. They're also hiring an assistive technology intern. So basically they have an internal software that they use to help keep track of accommodations and train students to use them. They need someone to help with that. So if you're into tech, or some sort of software building thing, this could be a good position for you. Next is Resident's Life, what's up? That's us, we're hiring three positions. The first one is a resident assistant. This is the highest paid leadership position on campus. You get a free year of housing and dining plan. You're in charge of a hall, of promoting community within that hall through events. You are also in charge of kind of the residents of that hallway, keeping up with them for anything that they may be going through during that year. And then, of course, you're on a rotating on-call schedule with the other RAs to help provide uh, things from simple, I got locked out of my room, let's make sure they don't have to sleep in the hallway to, hey, some sort of emergency is going on, let's be able to respond to that. Okay, so that's the RA. We have a junior resident assistant, which gets free housing for the whole year. They essentially help the residence life department run its daily operations, so they help run our office, and they plan our bigger scale events for the whole community rather than an individual hallway. And then they are the most likely people to get hired into the RA position, either mid-year or the year after they complete that goal. And lastly, we also need someone to make us look cool. Please become a marketing intern, run our social media for us, promote our events, um, and just help get the good things we want in residence life out there. Okay, campus ministry. They have a lot of positions. Before I go to the next slide, you'll see it for yourself. Essentially, if you can think of literally anything that you want to do ministry-wise, I promise you, campus ministry has an internship for it, or they will create one. So just to go through them really briefly, they have internships for pretty much anything you can think of that Catholicism touches. Uh, they've got outreach for like reaching out to the masses. They've got peer ministry for one-on-one -on -one and small group interactions. They also need a social media person to do a Hispanic ministry since we have such a big Hispanic Catholic population on this campus and that's a whole culture in and of itself. We've got service and community involvement for internal service community. We've got relief services for helping outside of the community. Household ministry for the people that live on campus and liturgical ministry for anything that has to do with mass or anything like this, okay? So they have all sorts of different positions if you are interested in them. We have student activities who are located directly behind me. And essentially student activities has a quick overview. All of these positions have a lot to do with planning events. So I'm gonna go through them briefly, but they're different interns plan kind of the different types of events on campus. Okay, so civic engagement interns are planning the types of events that have to do with diversity in a collaborative community. We've got traditions intern that are helping plan the events that make UST UST. We've got the programming intern, which is doing those events that are not just like one-time big events, but rather programs that happen throughout the year, and especially kind of focusing in on the computers. And we have a leadership intern who is planning uh, what it sounds like leadership events, leadership summit, the lunch and learns. You might see those little advertisements for those on campus throughout the month. All right. We have student leadership organizations, otherwise known as SLOWs. These are also hiring for positions. Um, SLOWs are basically, uh, a good way to think about them is they manage bigger budgets than the internships we've talked about so far. So examples of things that they are hiring for is Campus Activities Board, who is beautiful and wishes to be here, dedicated to enhancing campus life one event at a time. Um, and they're doing that through large scale events. We've got Campus Community, which is doing events that promote um, all of the different representations of people on campus. And we have Campus Initiatives, which are focused in on sustainability and spirit. So if you've seen those really uh, amazing people on Fridays carrying bins of recycling from one area of campus to another, and you're like, wow, part-time student, full-time hero, this could be you. <laughs> um, and spirit, so they're the ones that are making the red and gold uh, bleed through your face. Okay? Beautiful. <laughs> and then finally, or not finally, but almost finally, we have a treasury board. So if you like money, this could be for you. Basically, all of you pay a student activity fee in case you didn't know you do. If you don't participate in events, you're paying for other people to have
have fun for you, so go to stuff. Uh, the Treasury Board is what takes the student activity fee that everyone is paying to be a student UST and deciding how it's going to be allocated throughout the different events and organizations that take place on campus. So if you would like to be a part of how money is spent, this is a great one for you. Student government, if you're into politics, this is a good one for you. They create and oversee legislation uh, that impacts the community here at UST. Okay. Club Sports Association. Um, if you know Peter and the Jack, he's hilarious. Meet him sometime. But basically, this is great for people that if you already like to do fun stuff with your friends, you could just get paid to do that with your friends and maybe some more people. These are the people that put things together like intramural sports, recreational events uh, that people go off campus and do. I think this semester they've gone go-karting and kayaking. So they get to organize things like this. Finally, I've said finally like three times, sorry, that's a really bad transition where you're not sure how many slides are left in your presentation, but we have RSOs, Registered Student Organizations. Uh, RSOs oversee, uh, think of like clubs on campus, so anything from, I don't know if there's actually a chess club, but something like chess club, to, oh there's a chess club, all right, good job. There's a chess club, uh, think of like smaller student organizations, right? You've got like Society of Women Engineers or something like this within your uh, majors. These are all clubs on campus overseen by RSOs and they're hiring for a few different positions to help that run smoothly. Finally, here we are. Okay, this is us in the upper left-hand corner. Very happy that we just got finished with that little presentation. Remember, hopefully you just kept your ears peaked for whatever is interest to you and go to the CLT page to look at job descriptions for fuller explanations of what's going on. Okay, so wonderful. We're very happy. We've attended a CLT intersection. That's where we are right now. And lastly, we are going to go through completing the application and the interview process and what that looks like. All right, beautiful. So, how to apply. The CLP application is on the presence page. Um, there's actually not that many questions on the CLP application because your questions are really gonna come through your interviews. But a few things that the application will ask for is a resume and a cover letter. Um, so if you've never made a resume or a cover letter before, what a great opportunity for you. Um, you can either look up templates online or you can connect with career services. I know that they set appointments, but they're also pretty happy to do walk-ins. They're located directly above us on the second floor of Kirker. Yes, please. Side note, he wanted me to announce right now they're over on the side of Kirker in that one little closed room, and they said they'll be there till 2. So as you leave here, if you want to check in with them, they're there. Go there right now. They're looking for people to stop by. Beautiful. That's great. So you'll need to do a... Resume and a cover letter. You might be applying for several different positions for a cover letter. Uh, if you've done those before, cover letters are typically written for one position. So just pick one of the positions that you're applying for and do a cover letter for that. It doesn't negatively affect anything else that you're applying for. We just need to see one. Yes? Uh, how long does a cover letter have to be? Great question. We would like your resume and cover letter to be one page maximum. Um, cover letters don't have to be like one page, size 11 font, single spaced, right? All you're trying to communicate in the cover letter is, here's who I am, here's what I'm applying for, here's why I'm applying and why I think I'd be good and why I think you should hire me, right? That's basically it. Again, if you look up templates for cover letters online, that kind of explains, uh, you'll, you'll see pretty quickly what you're going for. Also, this is a developmental practice, okay? So if you upload a cover letter that you're like iffy about, great, you're gonna get feedback back on it, right? Last year we literally had someone upload a resume, don't do this, but they uploaded a resume that was a screenshot of the notes pad on their phone that said, I worked at Marvel's lab. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, you can do more than that, but we did hire that person. So there's hope for you if you are really at stage zero for your resume, okay? So that's the resume and cover letter. Um, I'll get into a couple other things about the application in a little bit, but to explain the interviews. So there are two interviews for CLP. One of them is a group interview. One of them is an individual interview. So to talk about the group interview first. These are next week. They start next week. You select your own time for a group interview. So on the CLP presence page, there's a link to book yourself into a group interview. So you'll want to do that yourself. Um, these are casual interviews. Okay, it's a group interview, so it'll be about 15 or 16 students interviewing at the same time. They'll be, they're scheduled for an hour, they'll be, they'll be shorter than that, probably closer to 40 or 45 minutes. Um, they're gonna be in dining hall, and they'll be activity-based. There's two activities. So uh, one activity is called the CLP name tag, which will be our next point of presentation. The second activity is just going to be a group activity of, of some kind. I'm not going to reveal what it is, but I will tell you ahead of time that the point of it is to see in you how you work with other people and um, 
like how you kind of showcase your own leadership skills. So just like a note of advice, this is not the time for you to take that back seat of the group where you don't say anything and you just let other people do the work for you. It's not a time for you to pretend to be someone you're not. We're not trying to just hire a team of extroverts. That would be stressful. Um, but we want you to contribute something, okay? So that's just a note of advice for that second activity. The first activity of the group interview is what's called the CLP name tag. I find that this is one of the harder things to explain, so we made a video for it that I'll do a little bit of explanation, we'll watch the video, and then we'll answer questions to clear things up. But essentially, the CLP name tag is uh, meant to hit two things. The first is a professional development piece. It's the elevator pitch. Has anyone ever heard of an elevator pitch before? Getting some nods? Okay, so an elevator pitch is essentially the ability to introduce yourself in 45 seconds or less, about the amount of time you would be in an elevator, to introduce who you are, what your strengths are, what you're going for, and why they should hire you. Right, so for example, an elevator pitch could be, hi, I'm Dana Knight, I'm here applying for the Assistant Director position in Residence Life. My top strengths are initiative, communication, and organization. I would love to be a part of this role because I'm passionate about community and making a space ordered and good for people to live. Okay, that's very simple. I just introduced who I was, said what I'm good at, said what I'm going for, and why I think I should be hired, right? And the amount of time it takes to be in an elevator. So that's the point of an elevator pitch. So the CLP name tag is going to be you introducing yourself with an elevator pitch in 45 seconds or less. The way you introduce yourself is you will have created some sort of name tag. It's the creativity piece. Every single leadership position on campus and in professional life requires creativity of some kind. That creativity might manifest through literally like creating banners and events and something, something like this, or creativity can manifest in the way that you design a website, right? The way that you write some software code. It doesn't matter. Those are all manifestations of creativity. So what you're gonna do for your elevator pitch is you're gonna have some sort of thing that you've created that will be how you deliver the elevator pitch. So that's what I'm gonna show the video of and then we're gonna answer questions to clarify from there. So Jared from Career Services um, has created a name tag to share with us here. Hi, I'm Jared Gibson. And for my name tag, I created this awesome headband. This is the headband that Naruto Uzumaki wears. Naruto and I are very much alike. We are both intentional relationship builders with all the individuals around us. We are both very empathetic to our village and university and all those who attend both. We also help lead me as a Hokage and I work in career services and higher education. So with that being my profession, I look to take that and my skills back to school to get my doctorate so I can eventually become a VP or president or even a Hokage, just like Naruto. All right, great job, Jared. He said that in about 45 seconds. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> before we move on to the next thing, I just want to show a little bit of a reason as to why you sh this is something you need to prepare ahead of time. This is not something that you should really be winging on the spot, okay? <laughs> We're just gonna, quick, you know, to uh, see why. to you as well. <laughs> some examples on the table in the back of some things that people have done in the past. Um, uh, uh, someone gave the example the other day just to show you how simple this could be. Some student who was a nursing student who applied last year 
his name tag was literally a latex glove that he put on and like wrote his five strengths on or something and somehow he used that to introduce himself. Okay, that cost him nothing. He probably stole that from Cisha. So, <laughs> so it can really be a simple thing. Okay. All right. That's the group interview. Now, the individual interview is the last thing. Okay, so the individual interviews, a uh, couple differences from the group interview. One, this is a professional interview. Two, you do not pick your own time for the individual interview. So when you do your application, you will notice that uh, it's gonna ask you for your availabilities between two days, March 3rd and 4th, and you can kind of put notes on your most preferred time. But we set that interview schedule because we wanna make sure that we're uh, scheduling it to where like the interviewer, who is interviewing you makes sense. Um, and we can't be in so many places at once, so it's just easier to do that ourselves. So the earlier you finish your application, the earlier we can get your schedule to you. Okay, um, great. These are professional interviews. Please dress professionally. If you don't know what that means, please Google dressing professionally. But some quick tips. Do not wear jeans. Do not wear a t-shirt. Don't wear a sundress. Okay, but you can wear slacks. You can wear uh, like a button down, um, whatever. If you don't own these clothes, good news for you, Career Services has like a million closets upstairs of free clothes for USC students to check out to wear to things like this. Okay, so don't feel like you have to go out and buy a three-piece suit for this interview. They will be in person. Um, the questions will be provided. What this means is you'll notice on the presence page, you can look and see a list of questions that will be asked to you. The list you will have has like 40 questions. We're not gonna ask all of them. We're just gonna pull from those, but you have a chance to look over what could be asked to you if you wanted to prepare ahead of time so you're not taken by surprise. And then they're gonna be uh, scheduled for about 40 minutes. Our goal is to finish your interview in about 20 minutes so that we have time at the end for questions for you and then for feedback. So there will come a point in the interview where we will be done with the interview, and then we will just let you know how you did. Now that doesn't mean that we're gonna tell you right there whether or not you're getting an offer for what you applied for. What it just means is we're gonna tell you how you literally just did in your interview. So it's gonna be feedback of like, Dana, I don't know if you noticed, but you were snapping literally the entire 20 minutes straight. Uh, maybe that's a nervous habit of yours that you wanna check out before you step into another professional interview. Or hey, Dana, you did a great job answering questions, but you never made eye contact the entire time. Right, it's good to make eye contact when you're talking. Okay, things like that is what you're gonna get interviews for. We're gonna write it all down so in case you get nervous and black out and forget you can do that thing. <laughs> all right, just some tips on the individual interview. Uh, please try to use something called the STAR method, which I'll go over in a second, to answer questions. Just the method of answering questions concisely. And then finally, these four questions, we are definitely going to ask you because they are always going to be asked you probably for anything you ever interview for forever, which is to know the mission of what you're applying for. Ask it, we're gonna ask you to tell us about yourself. We're gonna ask why we should hire you and we're gonna ask if you have any questions for us. These are really standard interview questions, so I would definitely encourage you to come prepared with something for this. Uh, for this last one, do you have any questions for us? Having some questions in your back pocket for interviews, like tell me about the culture of your department or something like this are good. You can ask technical questions about the positions if you have them. But just having some good questions for your interviewers is always a great thing. The STAR method is just a way of answering questions uh, to help you think through how to answer in a way that's concise and meaningful. So it stands for situation, task, action, and result. So essentially, just for an example, we could ask you, Dana, tell us about a time that you were in a conflict. Okay, what we don't want is for me to come in and just like set the scene. Right, where I tell you everyone who was involved, everything that was going on that day and earlier that week that led up to this conflict and all the details so that you were really just there living my conflict vicariously with me. That's not what we want. We just need something really simple. I was a part of a group project and we had to build a rocket ship. That's the situation. The conflict, none of us knew how to build a rocket ship. The task, our rocket ship had to fly to the moon by the end of the week. <laughs> the action that I took, I enrolled all of us in a trap. I took it upon myself to enroll my team in a crash course on aerodynamics and rocket ship building um, that we completed within three days. The result <laughs> was that we made a rocket ship out of paper mache and it didn't work at all. But here's what we learned from the experience. <laughs> right, so it doesn't matter if my result is positive or negative, as long as I can explain what happened, how I contributed, and what I learned from the experience, right? Keep it concise, keep it meaningful. Beautiful. Oh, sorry, just one more note on this. Um, one of the reasons we give this is because you don't have a ton of time for your interview, right? And we're gonna probably ask you up to 20 questions, which means you're limited to a minute and a half to two minutes per answer. 
So this is a good way to make sure that your answers are like packing a punch in a positive way. And just a note, if we notice that you are talking too much or getting a little off track, uh, know ahead of time that you will likely be interrupted. That's not meant to be an insult, it's just meant to help you stay on track. Okay, great. An optional part of the interview process is reference forms. These are not required, so if you don't do this, this will not hurt you. If you do do this, this could help you both in getting hired and also just help you for having a part of this in your life, okay? If you've never had a reference letter written for you before, uh, you will soon eventually need one for anything that you're applying for, whether that's a job or some type of internship or an organization or something like this. Um, it's great to have some people in your back pocket who you know can attest to your character. So if you decide to do this, one of them needs to be an on-campus reference, so faculty or staff, and one of them can just be anyone else that knows you well, right? So knowing someone who can say, hey, Dana's worth hiring, not just because she's good at what she does, but because I can attest that she's a really good person, or something like this, okay? Great, can't say it enough, Career Services is here to help with a lot of this stuff. Uh, so cover letter, resume, et cetera, et cetera. They can do mock interviews. They can hook you up with free professional clothing. Again, they are located right upstairs above us in Kruger. Okay. Um, one other thing that Career Services offers is headshots. So this is part of the application. This is gonna ask you to upload a headshot. Please note that this is different than uploading a selfie. So we don't want one of these, and we don't want that one picture that you took with your cousin that you cropped them out, but they were standing too close to you, so their face is gone, but their shoulder is still there, right? We just want you, and only you, shoulders up, professional shot. They have a little studio upstairs in Career Services. Um, I literally did one the other day. That's what their picture on the PowerPoint is from. So they have like a little backdrop, a little ring light. That's kind of fun and whatever. You can literally put a blazer on for what you're wearing right now, and you're gonna be solid and good to go. Okay, so those are free. You walk in anytime. Okay, dates for you to know. The applications are due next Monday, February 27th at 10 a.m. You should read that as Sunday night, right? They're due Monday morning, read it as Sunday night, just for your own accountability. Um, references, should you choose to do them, are due on March 7th. Again, the group interviews happen next week. You sign up for your own group interview time. The link for that is on the presence page. Individual interviews will happen between March 3rd and March 4th. You, don't, you will have one of those two days for 40 minutes. The sooner you do your application, the sooner we can plug you into an interview time. And then finally, packet pickup is on March 20th. What packet pickup is, is everyone who goes through CLP will receive a packet after spring break. That packet will include uh, job offers, if any, that you are being offered. It will give back to you your resume and cover letter with feedback written on it. Uh, whatever else that's on the sides put in, supplemental material. And then hiring rubric feedback. So that will be, like I was saying, in your interviews where you give you feedback, they're gonna write it down. In case you forget, you're gonna get that back. So it's just for your own development. Ooh, okay, almost done. So if you get a leadership position through CLP, you will be expected to go to the leadership summit. This is open to all students, but it is expected of people who get hired through CLP. It's on March 25th from 9 a.m. to 2.30, lunch is provided. Uh, this is led by students. And anyway, if you have a conflict with this and you get hired through CLP, just talk to your respective supervisor about that conflict when the time comes, okay? If you have any questions, uh, first I would encourage you to go to the CLP presence page, which is right there. Um, it's also tinyurl.com slash USTCLP2023, or you can just do all what you're doing right now. Um, I would encourage you to look for the answer to your question on here first. You might be able to answer it yourself, and if you cannot find it or you have some sort of niche question, then feel free to reach out to me personally. My email is also written on this CLP presence page thing. All right, beautiful. Thank you for coming. Does anyone have any questions for the good of the whole? Fantastic. If you have individual questions, you want to sit behind, go ahead. If you did not get uh, checked in by BJ, if you didn't give BJ your student.